Hello, and thanks for joining me today. My name's Jeff, and you're listening to Episode 4 of the Comic Book of the Day podcast. Hey, welcome to the podcast. Today, we are going to talk about today's comic book, which is Green Lantern, number 85. All right, this is published by DC Comics. Uh, the publication of this comic is uh, sometime around October, November of 1971, Right, so this is early seventies. Now, I would not have purchased this comic uh, at the comic book stand, but I do remember uh, there was a point when I became super infatuated with Neil Adams. Um, in fact, uh, my journey to Neil Adams started with uh, a Treasury comic, which we talked about yesterday. Uh, this particular Treasury comic was a Neil Adams retelling uh, a collection of some of the Rajah Ghoul stories uh, that Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams worked on in the 70s. And uh, I believe at some point later uh, in my in my youth, I came across and purchased that uh, treasury edition. I wouldn't have, I don't believe I purchased it when it was published, but it would have been perhaps maybe a couple of years later. Uh, I would have somehow come across the Neil Adams, um, Batman collection of him and Denny O'Neill's work on Batman. And that led me to want to investigate more about who this guy was, Neil Adams. Uh, I was completely blown away by the artwork, right? So, uh, at a time period when comic book art was, you know, my my exposure to comic book art would have been around Kurt Swan type art, you know, in the 70s. It would have been very, you know, John Romita, Kurt Swan. It would have been, you know, very, very uh, straightforward comic book art, um, mildly realistic, but realistic to a point where it was, you know, very obviously comic book drawn and, and intended for comic books. And then all of a sudden, uh, this guy, uh, Neil Adams, shows up on the scene, or at least into my periphery, right? Into my, he had been around for a while, but, you know, at a certain point in my youth, uh, I picked up on the stuff that Neil Adams was putting out on Batman and uh, just became completely obsessed with trying to find out all I could about this guy. And uh, so, you know, that naturally led me to the to him and Denny O'Neill's work on Green Lantern, um, his famous run on Green Lantern seventy seventy six was the first one, um, and then I believe the last one was somewhere upwards of like ninety two or ninety three, somewhere around there. But um, uh, I over the years have been fortunate enough to put together a a fairly nice run of those uh, Green Lantern books from seventy six to the nineties. Whenever whenever Neil Adams' last work on those was. And this is just sort of um, a random representation of the, of the work that they did. But it really is, you know, one of, one of my favorite books. I mean, it really, it's sort of, you know, if you were ever to sort of think about what a quintessential Bronze Age comic would be, uh, this is definitely one. It has every single thing you would want from a classic 70s comic book. Uh, you know, the cover... Uh, you know, goodness gracious, the cover alone, you've got uh, Speedy on the front cover shooting heroin. Um, you've got, the, you know, the needle and the heroin and the, and, and the junk sitting in the foreground. And you've got Speedy, you know, with his arm, you, you know, his hand on his arms. And you've got a, a horrified, you know, Green Lantern looking on. And as, as he discovers that his sidekick Speedy is hooked on heroin and you know, there's Green Lantern on the cover there scolding him. And it's just a, you know, a horrific scene. You know, if you're, if I guess if you're browsing along the the newsstand looking at typical superhero fare, and then you've got the, you know, the, 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 the byline there, the headline there drawn at the bottom, you know, DC attacks uh, youth's greatest problem, you know, drugs. You know, so there you go. It's the height of, of, drug fever. Uh, here's Speedy hooked on heroin, doing heroin. This is a uh, part one of a two part story. Um, but this is early seventies. And I remember, you know, I don't really remember exactly how I reacted to the, to the drug storyline. Um, but I do remember thinking 
how interesting it was that these comics, these, this series of comics had things, you know, like hippies, um, you know, it had people of color openly questioning, you know, r- racial issues in the book. So I remember, I remember thinking, you know, when I first stumbled across this stuff, that it was, you know, pretty cool in, in the same way that you would you'd start to gravitate towards things like National Lampoon, uh, you know, if you were looking for counterculture or irreverence or things that would, you know, pick up any sort of counterculture lifestyle, these would... This was a, a good opportunity to jump into something like that. This, you know, um, at the time in the early 70s, there would have been underground comics that would have addressed these things a little bit more head on and a little bit less preachy. Um, but that's the environment that these things are being created in. Uh, so this is pretty cool. I mean, this is, you know, right on the tail end of the 60s, uh, early 70s, a couple of young comic book creators, Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams. You know, I, I, they're probably in their thirties at the time, uh, or, or perhaps even younger. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly, you know, how old they were when they started working on this, but it would have been, you know, early on in both of their careers. Um, this stuff you know, that they worked on green lantern and green arrow, it, it, it predates the work that they ultimately get to do on Batman. So, um, but this is, you know, sort of the beginning of, uh, social awareness in comics uh, and it's being led by you know two sort of younger guys at the time who would have been you know pretty well pretty in tune with the counterculture and the lifestyle of the of the early 70s and the late 60s Um, so this would have been a pretty cool thing I think I don't think it would have been you know if you go back and read it now it doesn't play as it doesn't read as heavy handed you know it doesn't read as like super preachy and super anti druggy um, it does seem you know like a snapshot in time uh, pretty interesting pretty interesting thing if you if you get an opportunity to read it uh, it's a really nice sort of you know look into what it would have looked like around 1971 Um so interesting stuff, um, you know, going on around this time in 1971, 1971, remember, I think it was earlier we were talking about 1975 and we were talking about all in the family being on, uh, and here we are in 1971 with all in the family being, you know, the number one show on television, uh, the flip Wilson show, uh, Marcus Welby Gunsmoke, Sanford and son is number six Mannix. Uh, number seven on CBS. Uh, number eight is a show called Funny Face, which I don't really remember. Uh, and then Adam 12 on NBC, which I vaguely remember. Um, the Mary Tyler Moore show, uh, Here's Lucy, and uh, Hawaii Five O round out those uh, top television shows for the time period. Really, um, the one I think that... F- sticks out the most I think is Sanford and Son Mary Tyler Moore but it would have probably been later on that I saw those I don't believe those are uh, series that I would have seen while they were actually playing uh, on TV Um, uh, let's see in the the summer of 1971 you could have gone and seen uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Uh, that would have been playing in the early summer Uh, yeah actually gone to the movie theater and seen Gene Wilder in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You could have also caught uh, Shaft. Um, damn right. Uh, you could have caught Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, uh, The French Connection, The Omega Man. So uh, lots of great movies uh, coming out during that time period. So um, there you have it. Uh, today's comic book, uh, Green Lantern number 85. Uh, that is August 1971 from DC Comics. Um, that is your comic book of the day. If you would uh, like to go check it out, you can go to comicbookoftheday.com. Uh, you can also follow along on Facebook at comic book of the day, uh, facebook.com slash comic book of the day. You can find us on Twitter at CB of the day. Uh, we're on Instagram as comic book of the day, uh, and, uh, various other locations as well. But the main place uh, to find us, of course, is comicbookoftheday.com. That's how you can find the podcast, and uh, you can actually see the comics, uh, see the comic books of the day. 
uh, as it were. So uh, give the website a visit and uh, take a look. And thanks for listening. Appreciate it. And we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, uh, real quick. Uh, tomorrow's comic, um, it looks like, is going to be an issue of Brave and the Bold. And, oh, a fairly significant one at that. Um, so thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>